The invading army consisted of the Hun cavalry, the Gepid and Ostrogoths infantry, and the troops of the other peoples of northern Europe. Orestes and Wonges command the armies. Attila is very happy with Edicon whose efforts of several years have borne fruit. The siege technique of the Huns does not leave the hope of lasting resistance even to the strongest Balkan fortresses. The city of Singajunum, future Belgrade, went to Attila without resistance and part of the garrison passed to its service. The superiority of the military art of the Huns was evident. For example, their generals took part in the fighting very rarely, but directed the operations of the positions behind the troops. They did not play the part of heroic chiefs, then ordinary among the barbarians. The Huns understood perfectly the priority of reconnaissance and the importance of the maneuvers of the troops, the role and the place of the command. The military superiority of the Huns stemmed from the superiority of their very dynamic strategy, inimitable for the sedentary peoples. The fortresses were blocked in such a way that even the solitary messengers could not pass unnoticed by the patrols of the riders. After the destruction of the walls by the machines of Edicon, it was mainly the Germanic infantry which went to the assault. She was enthusiastic about the possibility of plundering the city taken. The Huns broke through the gates opened by the infantry and swept their way to quickly occupy all the key points of the city. In case of necessity they set foot on foot and crushed the soldiers of the adversary, less protected. The army of Orestes besieged Sirmium, capital of Pannonia, of his native region. It was the city of the Illyrian emperors, who saved the empire two centuries earlier, one of the four capitals of the Roman Empire under the Tetrarchy of Diocletian. Orestes looks at this city with such a glorious past. How can one persuade the besieged, determined to fight to the end, to renounce an absurd resistance? He sends Constan, one of the Roman secretaries of the government of Attila, to negotiate with the bishop and the commander of Sirmium. The besieged ask the Huns to leave a door and let Constan enter the town. The door quickly closes behind him and he is taken to the palace of the bishop who receives him alone. I am disagreeably surprised to see many Romans in the service of the king of the Huns. How can you participate in the war against your compatriots? The envoy of Orestes replies quietly, We are citizens of the Western Empire and serve the state of the Huns with the agreement of the government of Ravenna. I was sent to Attila by Aetius with other specialists in return for services of the Hun mercenaries who defended Gaul against the barbarians. As far as this war is concerned, it is provoked as you well know, by the crime of a bishop of your country. The bishop looks down. Well, let's not argue. What are the propositions of Orestes, your general? Being an old Pannonian, he wants to save your city from destruction. Orestes proposes not to irritate the Huns' warriors by unnecessary resistance because in this case he will not be able to do anything to save your lives. Your soldiers can either go to a part of Pannonia, belonging to the Western Roman Empire and not participate in the war, or enter the Hun army. But what will happen to the civilian population? The warriors will visit all houses and requisition valuables, some of the nobles will be taken away as hostages. The bishop leans towards Constan. I know that the Huns take the most influential people as hostages. So I'm almost sure to be among their hostages. One cannot rule out this eventuality but the Huns freely free their hostages against a ransom. A special government will probably be created to manage the occupied Roman territories. The bishop rises. Stay in this room, I will discuss Orestes' proposals with the commander. 
In the meantime, you can read the holy books. The bishop returns fairly quickly and invites the envoy of Orestes to follow him. They enter a church. The bishop turns to Constan. The commander hesitates. I can persuade him to surrender if you promise to render me a personal service. Why not? I am at your disposal for any business that does not contradict my status. Not at all. It is a private and charitable affair. I want to give you these church vases under the condition that you redeem me if I find myself in captivity with the Huns, or redeem other prisoners if I die. Constan takes in his hand one of the golden vases which shines under the light of the candles, admires his decorations, turns it slowly, I shall be honored to render you this service. But I cannot take these vases with me now. I do not know how to act. The priest of this church will hide them in a safe place and will give them to you after the occupation of the city by your army if you now swear to respect our agreement. Of course you can keep some of the treasure in equitable compensation for your efforts. Constan reflects a little and swores. I swear in the name of our almighty Lord that I will sell these sacred vases to free you from captivity and, in case of your disappearance, to release other prisoners. To the delight of Orestes the city surrenders and most of the soldiers have put themselves under his banners. At the end of a few days, Attila arrives, accompanied by Wonders and Edicon, and enters solemnly into the city. The legionaries in the central square look with interest at their new emperor, the generals and the officers who follow him. In the evening, in the ancient palace of the Caesars of the East, the joyous emperor dines in the circle of his closest collaborators. He personally offers wine and food to the spirit of the fire, makes a short prayer and proposes the first toast for the first great military victory of our empire. For General Orestes who managed to take this city without bloodshed. Hooray! Hooray! Ara! Uri! Vivat! Men drink to the bottom of the cups. Orestes holds a speech of thanks. This victory is yet another convincing proof of the possibility of a Pax Hunna Romana. I raise this cup for the Emperor Attila, for the realization of all his great ideas. Hooray! Ara! Uri! Vivat! The wine flows afloat. One begin to joke. The poor legionaries say that it was not very interesting for them to serve under the authority of scandalous women and eunuchs. It is said that Theodosius almost never leaves the four walls of his palace. He sometimes walks on the back of a quiet horse and takes himself for a great horseman. Do you remember how the Roman ambassador nearly fell from his horse during the negotiations for Margam's peace? The most fertile pastures are on the banks of the Don. No. On the banks of Ertich, the grass is more tasty for the cattle. The inhabitants of Narbon and Gaul came to meet us with flowers. A young girl, when the Chinese learned the gold sword find. Attila feels happy. Dear Orestes, I remember my history lessons that this palace was built for the Caesar Galerius who later became Roman Emperor. The great Emperor Probus was born in this city and it is he who introduced the vines in this region. That is right, your majesty. After the peaceful taking of this city with such a glorious past and having drunk this magnificent wine of Mount Alma, I begin to believe the words of this great warrior, if affairs go well. We will no longer need soldiers. What a grandiose dream. But I understand it perfectly. Aurelian, another great emperor, born in that city, was a worshipper of the solar god, Sol Invictus. Which he perceived a little as we perceive our Tangra. It's very interesting. Orestes becomes animated because he often thought of this resemblance. Yes. His astral monotheism was like your religion, open to all cults, 
because Sol Invictus does not identify with any existing god. Like Tangra, it prevails over others. So all religions can coexist peacefully. Aurelian claimed to be appointed by God, a formula used by the Huns emperors since Modern. Attila smiles. But this formula obliges the emperors to show by their success the favor of God. That is why I rejoice so much at the miraculous taking of this city. The emperor pauses, takes a sip of the wine and then asks, Besides, why did not the bishop of Sirmium come to greet us? Orestes lowers his head, he was killed during the capture of the city. How so? Is written Attila. By who? I do not know. The circumstances of his death are very obscure. Start the investigation. We must find the culprit quickly and publicly cut off his head. I will not tolerate this odious crime going unpunished and harming my policy.